do you know that you have the ability to move God's heart? Hey, I'm so excited that we are back. I've been traveling a lot. We had a we had the winter break uh, with Christmas and New Year's, and then I went to Hawaii on a random, spontaneous trip that ended up being like incredible. And I'll share more about that at another time. But we're back, and we're in day 27 of my book. I will always overcome, and uh, that doesn't want to focus at all. Let's see if we can get it to focus on that. There it is. I will always overcome. You can pick that up on Amazon um, or on my website, shanewinnings.com. We're on my phone right now because our camera's dead, and I tried to charge it while we're recording, not working. So hey, here we are. I didn't want to not put out a video again. So we're we're doing this for the unforeseen future. So. Uh, First, before we get back into this, it's been a couple weeks. Um, people have had the chance to get the book. New friends are going to be joining who've been reading the book. Let me know. Um, have you missed these videos? Are you glad that I'm back? Have you been reading the book? What's it been doing in your life? What's it been speaking to you? What's God been saying? Um, give me an update since we haven't, you know, communicated in a couple of weeks. I haven't been seeing comments. So let me know. I'm excited. We're at Exodus 32. In verse 14, it says this. So the Lord relented from the calamity he had threatened to bring on his people. Here's what I said. This interaction between Moses and the Lord is one of the first where we see how love and compassion from humans have the ability to move God's heart. The context here is that God was going to destroy the Israelites who constantly turned their backs on him and worshiped false idols. God told Moses to leave him so that he could consume the people and exalt Moses into a great nation. He's like, hey, these people are corrupt. They're horrible. I'm going to deal with them, and I'm going to elevate you because you serve me. Now, Moses pleaded with the Lord on behalf of his people, but also on behalf of the image of God. Moses didn't want the Egyptians to think God was a harsh God by leading his people out of captivity only to kill them in the wilderness. God was moved by Moses' compassion and did not carry out his threat. Now, how many of you know, I got something in my teeth, sorry. I love how real this is. I don't edit anything out. How many of you know that God would not have been wrong to wipe all those people out? They totally deserved it, just like we deserve it. We deserve to be wiped out because of sin, but Jesus came he paid the price for our lives that we could be set free. We could be made righteous. And so now we're righteous in the sight of God. But we're talking about people who are under the law. They did not have the cleansing of sin. They only had the forgiveness of sin once a year on the Day of Atonement through the high priest. And uh, I've done some teachings on that. If you go to my YouTube page, you'll find it. But God would not have been wrong. Moses didn't correct God here. God would have been totally justified in wiping these people out. But... Because of the compassion that Moses had, God chose to uh, spare them. And, and he was impressed. He was moved by his compassion. And so that could get confusing. I don't want anyone to think, you know, when you read that in the Bible, like, oh, Moses knew better than God. No, that wasn't it. God was going to do something, and Moses had the ability out of his compassion to get God to do something else. And uh, I think that's incredible. We also see Abraham in the book of Genesis contending with God not to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if he could find a few righteous people in it, although there were none. We see this in the life of Jesus, who was frequently moved with compassion that led him to act. We serve an alive God, a God who cares, who has a heart, and has shown us that throughout Scripture. How amazing is it to know that we can move God's heart with our lives? God is watching you and looking upon you, not at the outward appearance, but at your heart. He sees your motives and your intentions. Let those motives and intentions be one that move his heart today. Let the way you intercede for your family, your city, and your nation move the heart of Almighty God. Let the way you love and contend for love in all situations move God. Moses could have easily agreed with God, taken the promotion, and left the stick stiff necked people behind and he would have been fine to do that they were after all slowing him down but moses chose love over self and that act moved god's heart and spared a nation may we do the same now here's the prayer 
God, thank you that you're alive. You're not a dead God. I love you and I worship you as my King and my Lord. Today I ask you to fill me. If there are any areas in my life that are lacking in compassion or love, I ask you to fill those places. I ask for a revelation of your love today. Show me the heart that Moses had on that mountain that would move your heart to spare people. Show me the love for people that would cause Abraham to contend with you. Show me the kind of love that would move Jesus with compassion. I want to move your heart, God, and I know that only by being filled with your love can I do it. Everything that's good inside of me is from you, and I'm asking for more. I want to honor you and please you with my life. I thank you for loving me and making me a new creation. Thank you for saving me from myself and my sin and from death. Today, I desire to love you and the people of this world more than I ever have before. Thank you that you're always with me, and I know I will always overcome you because you live inside of me. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Isn't that good? Guys, here's the takeaway. When your focus is not on self, but others, you will do things that move the heart of God. And so today, knowing that um, God never makes a mistake, know that you have this invitation. You know, let, let me put it this way. I could have a plan for my son. That's great. But he could say something to me and I can be so moved by his love. And we're talking one day. I can't wait till he talks, like talks. He's only 14 months now. He could say something that would move me in such a way that I change my mind. I wasn't wrong the first time, but I want to do this. That is what God did in the scriptures, and he's still doing it today. We have the ability to move God's heart, and it's out of a place of love. So let us lead lives of love today that caused things to happen that were not going to happen before. That is powerful, that the way that you love can move our creator. And the Bible says, Jesus said this, they're going to know you by your love. Come on. That is so cool that not only will people know us by the way we love, but God can change his mind by the way that we love. I don't know about you. Well, I do know about you. I know that you want this. I know that you want to love God more than ever, and you want to show the love of God more than ever. And so let this just be an encouragement to get out there and to be loving on others. All of these circumstances, all of these situations these guys were put in, it was others being destroyed so that they could be set apart and go further with God. And both of them said, no, Lord, please don't spare this city. You know, spare these people if possible. Let us have a heart that's not quick to just run after the promotion and after what God has for us and set us apart and, you know, forget everybody else. They're not hacking it. And maybe, maybe even rightfully so in some instances. These people in Sodom and Gomorrah, these people, the Israelites, they deserve to be crushed. But when we have a humble heart, remember that we once deserved to be crushed and now have been made uh, a part of the family of God. When we have a heart for others and remember, if they are in a place deserving to be crushed, we used to be right there. Let's have a heart and let's contend and watch God do amazing things in the lives of others. Amen.